Welcome to Inside CPS. Hello, I'm Jessica Perez, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this edition of Inside CPS. Today, we'll take a look at what the district is doing to help keep students both in school and engaged, and hear about how CPS is reaching out to youth who have left school before graduating. We'll also get a chance to check out some STEM students as they work in the classroom with cutting edge technology. And we'll also hear from our Executive Director for Social and Emotional Learning, Karen Van Osdal. She'll share with us some of the restorative justice practices that are helping keep more students in school. And in honor of National School Counseling Week, we'll introduce you to Martha Williams, a dedicated and dynamic school counselor at Crown Elementary. But first, let's begin with hearing the latest happenings in CPS News. And for those parents who are interested in an early childhood education for their son or daughter here at Chicago Public Schools, enrollment is just around the corner. If you would like to enroll your three and four year olds in the district's pre-K program, you can begin submitting applications on March 2nd. And for additional details on this process, please visit www.cps.edu backslash ready to learn. As a school counselor, Martha Williams concerns herself not only with academic achievement, but with the social emotional health of her students. See how her understanding of their needs helps empower students at Crown Elementary. My name is Martha Williams, and I am the school counselor here at Crown Academy. We're projecting to work on for bullying and health, correct? I actually started here as a special education teacher and loved the school, loved the population of students. Okay, everyone have a great rest of the day and I will see you later. If you have any questions or concerns, make sure you see me. The day-to-day -day roles of a school counselor varies dramatically from school to school, from district to district. The roles that I am responsible for here at my school are managing the student's well-being. I see students in crisis mode. I do preventive work as far as getting and reaching out to community partners, leveraging the kind of partnerships that we have, utilizing the resources in the community as well as in the school with our staff to be able to meet the needs of our students and then also reach out to families. Ms. Williams is a great school counselor because she is truly passionate about the students in our building. Uh, she oftentimes takes the lead on many projects that both come uh, our way via the board, but sometimes just things that she's kind of assessed in our building as a need. This is your team, and Ms. Armitage and I are here just to help facilitate and to guide. I absolutely hope that I can emulate Mrs. Williams as a school counselor. Um, I've made a couple jokes with her that she's really the epitome of what I want to be when I work as a school counselor, and I think I couldn't have found a better placement within CPS than to be her intern. I think Ms. Williams is a great counselor because when you come down to the counselor's office, she takes time like to break down your situation. The challenges that our students face and challenges that I have to help them overcome, one is bullying. One is relationship building. One is home life situations. Last month, um, like my house caught on fire and she, I you know, like did a, like a fundraising thing to help me and my mom um, hurry up and get me a house. And she, uh, she got me supplies and stuff like that. Every time I need help, she helps me. Our um, youth wellness team is a group of students that I developed here, um, ranging in grades from 6th to 8th grade. You need to encourage them. And so you already talked about how you're going to go in and you're going to work with them on how to be a good student how to complete your homework, where to look to for help, how to utilize the tools that they already have in place. I'm the editor of the Youth Wellness Group, and what we do is we talk, we talk about the specific needs that we see in our school, and we try to make things better. Scores and the get good grades, but what kind of work do you think you can do as a group to help change things that are occurring in the sixth grade class? Just to see that the work that I do, the work that counselors do in reaching students and meeting their needs and trying to get them to the next level. And when you see that student has made it, it's a reward. It, it truly is. I don't know, even more than that is 
when you have students that come back after graduation and they've been gone for a while because I, I keep up with our, our graduates as they move on to college as they move into the work sector yeah I think that's rewarding in itself it's just working with the students and seeing them move and grow and then coming back and sharing with me that hey I made it Miss Williams Colleges and employers are in need of people with science, technology, engineering, and math skills. Let's see how CPS is getting students excited about furthering their education in these fields. We're going to be doing some very hot stuff today. We're going to be doing some computer programming and making computers bend to our will. The STEM Launch Series is a quarterly series of events that take place um, in partnership with IIT, Chicago Public Schools, and City Colleges, and it's funded through the Office of Naval Research Critical Mass Grant. So try changing the sound that you make, try changing the instrument that you're using. We're doing a scratch program where we are like testing the programs to see how we can make things play with um, the makey makey. The hands-on experience really inspires students. They really get a chance to get involved with the programs themselves rather than looking at a textbook or hearing a lecture. Actually having the ability to roll up their sleeves, get into a project, really engages them a lot more and teaches them the real-world aspects of the material that they're learning. Experiences like this one are really good in preparing kids for college. And one of the things that it does is it makes you use your mind creatively. When you're smart, the world needs you to be creative with how you're smart. And when you come to a college environment, that's actually a really nurturing place for this kind of thing to happen. And you guys can already see some of the cool things you can do. Maybe you can have your partner hold the ground. STEM is important because it really uh, provides that extra knowledge and insight into science and technology, engineering and math fields that are so important uh, for students to learn. And we're rapidly losing our current generation of scientists and engineers. And it's really important that we start building that next generation. So the Navy's dedicated itself to building that next generation. There's a lot of industry and colleges these days that are looking for uh, students with this knowledge and these abilities and skills. And the fact that these programs exist really support those students and give them a step up in attaining college and career success. I am actually getting college credits as a, as a junior now. This opportunity allows the students to be able to expand and broaden their horizon. It gives me the ability to test out new things and things that I may not have experienced yet. Research tells us that as many as 50,000 children may have left CPS schools without a high school diploma. We have not forgotten about these students and are relying on our student outreach and re-engagement centers to get them back in school on their own terms and at their own pace. So the mission of SOAR is to help students that have dropped out of school uh, return to school. So we want to get them back on the right track. Uh, we want to give them the support that they need. We're really big on uh, providing them with the wraparound services and the referrals they need to, to get back on the right track. Uh, and we provide something that uh, is oftentimes missing, that caring adult piece. Uh, all of our staff uh, show the kids that they, they care about their success. Uh, and the kids you know, love the fact that they have a person that's, that's cheering them on as they uh, try to get back into school. I dropped out because I just gave up on myself. You know. I was hanging around with the wrong crowd. I got into a lot of problems. I was fighting a lot. Um, my grades were slipping a little bit, not that bad, but I fought a lot, so my mom took me out. And I went to Pathways. Um, they were telling me about the program. They told me it would help prepare me for school, you know, get me on track. When I call a student, um, what we do to motivate them to come in is to give them information about the program. Um, to let them know that there are options out there for them to return back to school. The objective is really starting small with small goals. Um, for example, waking up, getting used to waking up. A lot of the times our students are not used to that schedule because they have been out of school for maybe a month, two weeks, or over a year. They try to push you more to your goals than what school would. What school, they will push you somewhat, but then let you figure that out on your own. Here, I have been working on getting confidence, self-confidence, uh, supporting one another, getting to know other people and just judging them by their cover. What they taught me here was that, man, not everything is, is worth getting mad over. I want to go to college. I want more in my life. I don't want to just end up working some dead-end job. You got two paths ahead of you. you know what I mean? The failure path is easy. It's a one-way one ride. You know what I mean? The success um, path, it's a bump in the road. It's a curve. It's, it's, it's a rocky path, you gotta find a way through it. We do work with them on a success plan where they do establish goals and 
we kind of are that backbone where we help them create those goals based on what they want to work on, but also what we see they should work on. In my future, I see myself um, finishing up school, going to college, and being successful. I just love this program, you know, because you're, you're around other people that are under your same circumstances, and they succeed. If they're willing to succeed, and they're some even are worse than you of what you have done, then what's stopping you from doing it? We've had uh, tremendous success with uh, students. Uh, we were able to get uh, over 130 students graduated uh, this past year. Uh, right now, we're at uh, about 1,600 kids that we've served since uh, the start of the, the new fiscal year. So since July, we've served 1,600 kids across all three sites. So we're really excited about that. Uh, and we're getting these kids back in school. Uh, kids are coming back and you know telling us how much they appreciate us helping them. Uh, and it's, it's just been very successful across the board. You know, we just want to keep keep helping the kids across the city. Uh, we want to. Last year, our, our total number of kids that we reached was uh, 1,400. So it was about 1,405 kids. Uh, and this year, already, we're halfway through the year, and we passed. We've surpassed the number of kids that we helped uh, in the entire year last year. So we just want to keep building upon that. Uh, as the additional seats open up in the option schools, uh, we want to help to make sure that we fill those vacancies. Restorative justice has dramatically reduced the number of suspensions and expulsions in our schools and has created a significant shift in school climate. Here to discuss this in greater detail is our Chief of Social and Emotional Learning, Karen Van Osdell. Hello, I'm Karen Van Osdell, Executive Director of Social and Emotional Learning at Chicago Public Schools. At CPS, we want children to feel connected to each other and to their schools. Schools should be a place where students feel comfortable voicing their feelings and their concerns. This is at the core of restorative practices, which are used not only to resolve conflicts, but to build stronger relationships within schools. When students come together in a circle, they begin to see each other and hear each other. Students who have been wronged will have their feelings heard, and those who have caused that hurt will be helped to understand the impact of their actions. And for those students on the edges of a conflict, there's a chance to build listening, advocacy, and problem-solving skills. Restorative practices have contributed to a significant decrease in out-of-school suspensions at CPS. But more than that, they've created a renewed sense of belonging amongst our students. We are confident that as more schools engage in these positive practices, this culture of caring will only grow. Many CPS youth have already embraced restorative practices, including several members of the Student Advisory Council. These dedicated students have made it a priority to see more of our schools adopt this holistic approach. And that's it for this episode of Inside CPS. If you have a story that you'd like to see featured on this program, email your idea to spotlight at cps.edu. I'm Jessica Perez. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.